Welcome to Reading and Writing Between the Lines, a podcast series about communication skills in the workplace. I'm your host, John Witzman. Join me as I speak with industry professionals and Conestoga faculty and alumni to explore their journeys with reading and writing skills. Follow us as we talk about how communications learning has changed over the years, how these skills are used in a wide range of industries, and the future of workplace communications. So you remember sort of having that feeling of, of connection with what you were learning when you were in post-secondary, that, that it started to click for you there more? Yeah, and I think that's sort of a natural, probably, progression. I mean, hopefully, maybe not for everyone, but yeah. like, you know, sort of in grade school, primary, middle school, and then the secondary. Is that, is that what they call them? I don't even secondary, know. Secondary, yeah, I think so. Or primary and secondary, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, you're kind of just you know, pulled along, they they insert you into those courses and such. But in university, it's like hope or college or post-secondary, whatever it is, um, you've chosen, you you know, you've decided among um, among the sea of possibility, you've decided to take your little boat and sail over to that island for four years, right? So, so yeah, there's just, there's, there's an interest of it. It was much more easy to dive into that material, um, yeah, I wouldn't say I would love to have been doing it every Saturday night, but you right. just but when it when you did it was it was easier because you were curious of what that next muscle was and where it attached and um you know what what bones kind of provide the architecture for that muscle to attach to, right? So it, it's almost like the difference between a a push factor and a pull factor. Like yeah. at, at at a certain point in your early days you felt like you were pushed towards these learning experiences and then uh, at a later point, something started to feel like you were being pulled towards the these ideas, and and it felt uh, attractive, appealing. Like you, yeah. you you were drawn to to dive further. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love that image before we we move on of the uh, the the, <laughs> the boat in the sea of possibilities, um, and and I wonder what it must feel like today to be. Um, browsing through all of the programs that are available to a student at Conestoga College or, yeah. or any uh, post-secondary school today and, and just the, the range of offerings. Um, yeah, it's tough. I couldn't imagine. I think I, I've spoken to just a couple people um, who have children or you know aunts and uncles of mine whose nieces and nephews are, are going out into uh, post-secondary. And you know I think I've even heard stuff like... Um, you know, oh, I had my career advisory meeting, essentially. What, what's that? Oh, that's where I had to kind of choose what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I'm like, I'm almost 40, and I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life yet. I'm kind of happy doing what I'm doing, but I don't know if I found exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. That's a pretty loaded <laughs> meeting that they're doing there, right? Absolutely. So, Do you remember when you were in post-secondary and you were, uh, you were studying kinesiology? Mm-hmm. Um, were you being asked to sort of demonstrate your learning and demonstrate your knowledge through through written communication a lot? Or was, was your uh, assessment uh, sure. uh, sort of mixed with hands-on? What was that like for you? I would say it was a bit of a hybrid. Yeah, a lot of hands-on demonstration. Although um, if I contrast it to sort of where I am now and what we teach, there was a lot more written, to be honest. Even so, kinesiology and health and fitness and things like that, um, the kinesiology is, is very practical in terms of contrasting it to like a psychology program, let's say. Right. Um, it was more written than what we teach at Conestoga, which is very practical, very hands-on. Um, yeah, I don't know what, I'm just actually, now that you said that, I kind of thought about this, you know, I str- I, I, I kind of opened up with like, I struggled with writing and, and reading and things like that. But like now when I was in, when I was in kinesiology, it seems like it was just easier somehow. I don't know why. The skills, the skills that that you were struggling with when yeah. you were younger, and I'm trying to figure they were out, there more. Yeah, yeah. Like, where did this like little moment happen where it just, yeah. you know, it must have just been the process, I guess. You know, I, this is something that we've started to hear from people who have been coming in and, and talking with me about this is is a, a sense of accumulation, yeah, right, a kind of acquired ability yeah. uh, and it's and it is kind of uh, imperceptible right that it, it is yeah it's kind of like a road trip right hey, do you remember that gas station that was like <laughs> you know three and a half hours back no no but if we drove by it again you'd remember it right, right? so yeah. it's a sort of this hindsight you're trying to remember these moments where you've acquired these skills and you can't quite pinpoint it but you know now yeah you know I you know I, I, I can spell 
those like those pretty challenging words and grammatically structure them or read someone else's um, content and sort of just say like, oh, they made a little bit of a slip up there kind of thing. Right? Yeah. Like I have a bit more of a hierarchy, a higher um, top down approach to kind of see this stuff now. And that marks the end of another episode of Reading and Writing Between the Lines, a podcast hosted by me, John Witzman, on behalf of the Communications Department and School of Interdisciplinary Studies at Conestoga College. You can find other episodes of this series on our YouTube channel, Reading and Writing Between the Lines. Stay tuned for more episodes. Thanks for listening.